everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I get into it and reveal my incredibly special guest today, I just want to mention that this episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped is the revolutionary electric trimmer that will not nick or snag your nuts. They are a longtime sponsor of my show. They're awesome. And if you go to their website, manscaped.com and use my code Holly, you will get 20% off plus free shipping. So with that out of the way, let me introduce um, our guest today, somebody who I've wanted to have on for a long time and somebody who has been requested I can't even tell you how many times. The one and only Abella Danger. Hey guys. <laughs> me today, Holly. Thank you. I'm so glad that we could finally do this. I know. I'm I'm very glad. I hate that it took um, you know, a global pandemic for us to both finally like because you're also so busy as well. And you know, it sucks that it took something like that for both of our schedules to finally match up. Because yeah. when I'm not busy, you're busy and vice versa. Yeah. So Yeah, totally. Well, and it's I agree. It is it is unfortunate that um this event led to me finally us both matching up time wise, but I have been trying to use this to catch up with guests that I know can't really get into the studio because of their hectic schedule. And you're definitely one of those people because you also moved from LA back to Miami. Is that right? Yes, I was about to say it doesn't help that I live across <laughs> the United States. So, and you just moved into a new house. I did. I'm in the process. It's um, and it's a little difficult. I'm getting all new furniture, so I'm getting packages every day over there, moving all the boxes slowly because I normally have movers. But then with this whole pandemic, you don't really want to be around people you don't have to be around. So. Yeah, it'll it'll be done soon, hopefully. I overlapped, so I gave myself a month from where I live now to my new house. That's smart. So, That's really yeah. smart. So can I ask, like, how are you – like, what style are you going to furnish it in? Like, what's it going to look like? Okay, so right now I live in a very modern, like, condo. It's, like, all glass. Like, there's no walls. So, like, everything is, like, all white and, like, glass. Like, but then the house that I got, it's, like, Scandinavian, like, mid-century. Like, it was built in 1956. Oh, so now cool. it's going to be more, like, mid-century, like, cozy beige, like, earthy tones versus, like, the really modern vibe that I have going right now. Hence why I had to, like, give away all my furniture because I was, like, this does not match. At yeah. all, my new house. That must be. Oh my! I haven't moved in like twenty years, so I can only imagine like what it must be like being able to like pick out all new furniture and and like completely stylize your house in like a different way and have a vision. Well, that's my goal is to not have to move for twenty years because it is the biggest pain in the butt, especially during a pandemic where like you know shipping is delayed and. You can't hire movers. I mean, you can, I guess. I don't know if you can, but yeah, it's just very, I'm going to be very happy when it's like all over and done with and I'm not going to want to move for a very long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're very much a Miami girl at heart. You've always talked about that. Can you tell us a little bit about what growing in, in Miami has been like for you and what it is about the culture and what it is about Miami that that holds your heart so much? Um. Yeah, well, I guess, I mean, you can relate because I'm sure you're very fond of like LA. I think that's where you're from, right? You're from yeah. Florida. Yeah, born and raised. So I, I actually live in the house I grew up in. That's, we moved into this house when I was five. That's beautiful. Like that's, <laughs> that's crazy. I would love that's to do that. But the house that I grew up in is not on the market, but that's something I really wanted to do. But um, it's just growing up here, it, it's I can't even explain it. Like, I just love Miami so much. Um, I love, my favorite thing, I guess, would be like driving around the city and like having memories and feeling like a sense of nostalgia. Like I'll I'll drive by like my old middle school and get like this flash, these flashes of memories. Like, so I have like a lot of emotional attachment to the city. But then I also love, like, it's just like a big melting pot of culture and it's so small, but so big. Like, 
you you can drive like 20 minutes and get to like the other side of the city and the beaches, the water is so warm. Like I could go on and on. Like I just love, love, love Miami so much. Like, ugh, I love it. I understand the whole nostalgia thing. So my house that I live in is actually also across the street from the elementary school that I went to. Oh, that's so cool. it's interesting because the noise of the bells, um, going off to mark when class starting, the sound of the children, um, even the sound of the teachers making announcements over the speakerphone, it's all very nostalgic to me because that's yeah. very much what I grew up hearing. And because I went to that school, is very familiar to me. So it's strange that, that all that noise that one might find distracting is very comforting for me. Yeah, I could totally relate, especially because I loved like all the schools that I went to growing up like so much that like I'll still talk to some of my teachers like it's just so awesome like to like still be like when I have kids like I want them to go to the schools I went to and like uh, I don't know I like it I love LA LA is an amazing city but I just don't have any like emotional attachment to it I totally understand I totally yeah. understand I I love LA as well, even though there are times that I fantasize about getting out of it. But I think a big part of me loving LA is the emotional attachment mm -hmm. that I do feel to the city and the fact that my family lives here. I know your family lives in Miami yes, yes, yes. and you're close to your family. So oh my gosh, so close. I'm so close to me, to my parents and like my sisters, like it's just like so much easier to just be able to drive and see them versus having to get on a five hour flight. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah, when I, so small. when I, when I, you off, but like Miami's so small. Yesterday I was like eating at a restaurant, and then as I'm leaving, like I see my sister walking into the restaurant. Like <laughs> that's how small it is. Like to put it into perspective, I think there's like 12 million point, forgot the point, but there's like 12 million people in LA, and there's only 2.4 million people here. Wow. So it's like so much smaller. So I've only driven through Miami. I actually <laughs> went to Florida. I've only been to Florida twice. And the last time I went was actually to shoot for twisties. This was ages ago. Oh, nice. And we were shooting in Fort Lauderdale, but we drove through Miami or we drove past Miami. And I remember being surprised at how small it was. And I was like, this yeah. is it. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very, very small. But yes, Fort Lauderdale is not that far from here at all. It's like a 30 minute drive. Yeah. And it's very nice as well. Fort Lauderdale is really beautiful too. The beaches there are very nice too. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get into your career, which obviously has been incredibly successful. You have how many million followers do you have on Instagram right now? Um, I guess, I think I have 5.5. Pretty sure. That's a fuck ton. <laughs> you, that's a fuck ton. Did you expect getting into this industry that you would ever become so famous? Like, has it been a complete surprise to you? Um, yeah, I don't really think that I'm famous at all. Like, I really don't. I think I just, I don't know, like, I just really like porn a lot and I love performing. And I guess that it shows so people like watching me, but it does surprise me like to this day, whenever I like go grocery shopping or like do anything in public and like people stop me, like, I'm like, oh, wow. Like, like it shocks me. I'm like, I guess people like do know me. Like, and sometimes I don't know. I'm like, do you know me because you watch my porn or just because you follow me on Instagram? Because I do have like, kind of a big following. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's like interesting. Like the last time that I was really shocked by it was when I went to the last Miami Heat game. So it's like an NBA, like the Miami Heat is like a basketball team, mm -hmm. like the Lakers, but it's like NBA. So I went to the game and it was the last NBA game of the season. And I had to get up like every two seconds because people just kept coming up to me, like asking me for pictures. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, wow, like not really like at a porn event, you know, but Mm -hmm. yeah, people watch porn and people love Instagram. So yeah. How do you, and, and how do you feel about that? Like, is it annoying to you that, that fans come up and constantly bother you or do you very much embrace it? No, it's not because I feel like from their perspective, it must take a lot of like courage to like mm -hmm. come up to me and actually ask me for a picture because you could easily just face rejection. So I never ever want to say no, because I feel like they will be like, I don't know, like, they'll be like sad that they like took like the balls to like actually ask me for a picture, which must be like pretty nerve wracking. Like, and then for me to say no, so I really can't ever say no. Like I respect that they had the courage to like ask me. Is there a right or a wrong way to approach you if somebody sees you out in public? 
Um, I guess the wrong way would be definitely don't like grab me or, you know, something like aggressive like that. But, um, and then people are usually nice. They're just like, oh my God, hey, like, can I have a picture? And like, I'm honestly shocked sometimes. Like some of the, some of the people are like really young and I'm like, whoa, like, and it's, it's people of like all ages. Like I was like getting, um, a facial today and like the guy that like owns the place he was like i saw you like i like you you're my favorite so it's like people of like all different age groups like a bunch of different generations like 18 year olds to like 40 year old like it's like all these different kinds of people and like girls too like not usually like it's like a lot of girls that come up to me too it's very cool yeah it's interesting um and, and really wonderful when you have female fans that are really supportive. I mean, obviously we love our male fans too, but I'm sure your demographic is mostly men. And so when you get a woman who tells you how much they appreciate your work and it's just, it's really nice. Yeah, it is a really cool feeling. Like when, when I check, you know how Instagram shows you the percentage of like male to female mm-hmm. followers. Mine is like um, 94% men. And I was like, whoa, like only 6% is women. Like, it's just crazy. So when I actually do get to meet one of the few girls that know who I am, I'm like, yay, like you really exist. Like, it's just more rare. But of course, I appreciate yeah. the male fans, you know. Yeah. Um. So how old were, because I, you were pretty young when you started in the industry. Were you 18 when you started? Yeah, when you shot me, I was 18. That was, you shot me like my first or second month in porn. Okay. Um, I definitely want to ask you like how you got into the industry. It's kind of the okay. standard question, but I did also just want to make a comment before I forgot because, you know, the, the subject of how old should you be when you come and in, get into yeah. porn comes up a lot. And a lot of people believe that the, a lot of performers believe that the, the age should be raised to 21 which I can understand, but then I also do tend to cite that there are certain girls who have come in at the age of 18 and have done really well for themselves. And I feel like made the right decisions from the beginning. And it's always like you and Sasha Gray are like the two girls that I'm like, well, but what about these two? You know, there's always exceptions to the rules. So how do you feel about that? Well, I will say that um, at the time, you know, when I was 18, like there were like, there was like one director that I couldn't shoot for because he only shot 21 year olds. And I was like, hey, like, that's not fair. I know exactly who that is. Yeah, not worth like mentioning the name, but you know, so um, then I now I'm 24 years old. And looking back, I was very young. And I realized that um, the reason why 18 year olds are allowed to do porn is because the teen category is so popular. So I understand why it's allowed, but I definitely think that the age should be at least 20. I'm not going to say 21, but I would say 20 when you're past those teen years. Um, Just because even looking back from when I was 18 years old to when I became 20, like how much I matured a lot within those years and you kind of realize more, um, consequences from your actions like your brain develops a lot more between those years and um I think I definitely knew when I was getting into the industry all the consequences that came along with it because thankfully I had a lot of guidance from Spiegler you know he made it very clear all your parents are going to find out all your friends are going to find out you know all the things that could happen he made sure that I was aware of that and thankfully I had someone that made it very clear to me all the all the negative consequences that come as well as all the good things that come from it. Um, but unfortunately, all the 18-year-olds that do come into the industry, they don't have that sense of guidance. Some of them do, some of them don't. And I don't believe that all of them are fully aware of all the negative things that come with the, the good things. So um, yeah, I definitely think that age should go up to at least 20, but... I don't see it happening in the foreseeable future just because the teen category is so extremely popular. And I know it did well for me being like a teen. So, but that's my opinion. It's also hard to argue that people can't do porn at 18 when they can go to war and die for their country at 18. Exactly. Exactly. 
tricky. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, yeah. that's another thing that I feel the age should be raised because again, you should, your brain isn't really fully developed to understand the consequences that can come from, um, from joining the army. You know, I think that the age for that should be raised as well. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Well, the government's never going to do that because it needs young, <laughs> naive, able-bodied yeah. people to. Yeah. And that's very unfortunate that it yeah. is, but I'm just happy that they raised the age to smoke cigarettes to 21 because I was like, why is that 18? Because smoking cigarettes is just as, if not more harmful than drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. You smoke cigarettes. It's something that you do every day, constantly. Um, I know because I used to be a cigarette smoker and I know the damage like it did to me, like, it, thankfully I quit, but, um, you know, usually when you drink, it's like you're a casual drinker, but the people that smoke, once they, nicotine is so addictive, you smoke every single day. And so I'm glad that they made the age for that 21 as well. Mm -hmm. So let's not lose hope. Maybe, I don't think they will, but maybe they will raise the age to join the army. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think so ultimately the only thing that we can really do right now is try to make sure that there's good, solid information out there for new girls, you know? And I think yeah. that social media has helped with that and the internet has helped with the ability to find resources on coming into the industry. I, we've talked about this so much on this podcast about like somebody writing a handbook or making like an instructional video. It's not guaranteed that everybody's going to read it, but I think another really important key part is having a good agent, which yeah. you had. And a yeah. lot of girls don't have that, that luxury. So tell us how you actually got into the industry. Like what made you want to get into the industry? how did you find Spiegler? Like all of that. Um, okay. So I was dating a guy that was a porn star. Um, he was like in porn before me. And I just really liked it because all the guys. Would I, know, would I know who he was? Um, I don't know, but he, I, he worked for browsers a lot. And um, that's why I have my last name is because of him, but he's no longer in the industry. So are you going to make me, are you going to make me guess who it is? Um, okay. So his name was Brig Danger. And, um, oh, okay. The name um, is so familiar, but yeah, I he, don't think I ever worked another with him. Porn after me who's like very, very, very popular. Um, okay. So I was dating him and it was perfect because most of the guys that I dated were very jealous and possessive with me, but he wasn't like that because I let him have sex with girls on camera all the time. So I could do my own thing. And, and then a couple months into us dating, he was like, why don't you shoot porn with me? And I'm like, no, like, why would I do that? Like, I really don't have to. And he's like, you'd be so good at it. Like you are already having sex with me. Like just shoot like a scene with me. And I was like, no, 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 no. And then after a while I was like, okay, fine. Like I'll do it. I was around it so much. Like I had visited porn sets before I got into porn. Like I went to like Brando's set. Um, like he's like a Brazzers director. Mm -hmm. but he was shooting with him. I went to set with him and it just became like so normal and cool. And I saw how much fun everyone was having. So I was like, I'm just going to try it. And then I shot my first scene with him and it was so much fun. It was like amazing. It was like second nature. Like it wasn't even work. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to do this like forever. Like this is what I want to do. And then I just never left. <laughs> Who did you shoot your first scene for? I shot my first scene for Bang Bros. Ah, okay. And you shot it with him. Yes. And it was with him. My first five scenes were with him. And then he wanted me to only work with him, but I was like, no, I want to work with other people. You get to work with other people. Like it's only fair. And then he was not down with that. So we broke up. And then, um, thankfully because of him though, cause he always loved working with Spiegler girls at the time, Bonnie was like someone that he worked with a lot, Bonnie Rotten. And he was always like, Spiegler girls are the best, they're the best of the best. So I always kept that in my mind that if I did want to have an agent, it would be Spiegler. So I, I like self booked my own scenes in LA and then I flew there and I was shooting a scene and I was shooting a scene and, um, they asked me, why don't you have an agent? And I said, because I only want to be a Spiegler and that guy, so it was Ralph Long, he took me to Spiegler's house right after the scene and he introduced me to him and I was so lucky because I was so new. I only had like five scenes that had come out and like that one that I shot that day, 
under my belt and Spiegler decided to take me. And at that time, Spiegler didn't really take new girls. Like now he does more, but at that time, he all the girls that he had were already like established porn stars. So I was really grateful for him. Yeah. If he does take new girls, he definitely vets them. Yeah. You know, did he vet you? Like, how did he make the decision to book you? Well, I guess that director spoke really well about me. The one that shot me. So it was Ralph Long. And then um, he kind of just asked around around me and he did like, he has like his little tests. So he would be like, call me tomorrow at 8 a.m. And I'll come. Like, I've then, heard that from like every girl, yeah, like, like the like, test yeah. punctuality. <laughs> yeah. So he like tested me in those ways and just kind of got to know me and then, and then took me in. I am like, like I give him such headaches. Like I really don't know how he puts up with me all the time because I'm such a brat and like, I just make his life so difficult sometimes. So I'm so grateful that I'm still like on the site and I'm talking about like, um, he pretends that I annoy him that much, but I mean, you can ask him. He'll tell you. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm fellow danger. <laughs> but Spiegler's like, I don't know. There's a really interesting quality to him. He's got this definite brusqueness about him, right? And he's very like, no bullshit, straightforward. Um, you know, he's got that raspy voice. Yeah. But there's something, he's got this disarming, strange kind of charm about him. Like, you know that you can trust everything that he says. He's never yeah. going to lie to you. Um, he's never going to try to fuck you over in a world where there's so many people who have like hidden agendas. Yeah. He's one of those straight shooters that is really rare. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. He is like the most honest, caring, like person, like in the industry, I think like, he's just like awesome. Like he's so, yeah. so awesome. He does not have like, he's very like strict because business is business, but he does not have a bad bone in his body. Yeah. And he really cares about the girls and, yeah. you know, the way that he brings like pastries to set when we're, I'm shooting a Spiegler girl or I remember one of the most touching things, uh, one of my most, the most touching stories about Spiegler was I think I was at the Expos Awards and he was walking a bunch of his girls to the table and he had this like plastic bag full of stuff. And I was like, what's that? He's like, oh, it's snacks for the girls because they don't feed you and they get hungry. And I yeah. want to make sure that they're not hungry. And I was like, that is so like thoughtful. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. We always stop on the way to award shows and like get snacks because he knows like we get so hungry. He's so, so awesome. Like, even if like, so like I'll, he'll text me and I'll be like, I'm sorry, speak like, I'm not having like the best day. And he'll be like, it's okay. Like he'll call me the next day. Like he'll check on me. Like, um, like my mom was like in the hospital. He'll like call me and make sure that like my mom's doing okay. He'll be like, first of all, how's mom? Like, like he's very, very, very like caring. Yeah. Yeah. And doesn't he have like a big Thanksgiving every year? Yes. Oh my gosh. My mom is like, why do you never come home for Thanksgiving? I'm like, mom, it's like tradition at this point. Like Spiegler Thanksgiving is like a thing. Like it's just, I can't miss a year. I wasn't even living in LA last year during like I had moved out um July of last year and I made sure I was in LA for Thanksgiving. I was like, there's no way I'm missing this. <laughs> at all. Does has anyone ever like recorded it? I feel like you could make that a like a oh. reality show, like the Spiegler Thanksgiving. It just sounds like so much fun. Someone should. It is really fun. Even girls that are no longer Spiegler girls, no longer in porn, show up to Spiegler Thanksgiving. And it's like <laughs> 30, 40 of us in like his tiny little apartment. And it's so fun. Like in the morning, we all go together, like pick up the food that he ordered. Like, cause he like gets everything like ordered in advance. Like, and it's like this routine. We go to the grocery store and like set everything up. Like I do it every single year. I wake up so early to do it with him. <laughs> so awesome. I love it. It's, just, it's so endearing to me, that story. I just think it's so great. Yeah, he's awesome. So uh, as I mentioned before, you're obviously like one of the top porn stars um, in the industry right now, and you're, you're, you're quite young. So for somebody who's new and really wants to set their goals and aspirations high and they want to achieve what you have achieved, what would be your advice to them? What do you think it is about you that got you to where you are today? Um... I think that it's just that I did everything 
when I wanted to and not just like as a strategic move. Like I never waited a long time to do anal. I was just like, I want to do anal. So I did anal three months into porn. I always did interracial. Like that was like one of my first, I was like, wait, that's like a thing. Like you wait to do your first interracial scene. Like I just did everything because I just wanted to. And I didn't think, oh, this is this is going to get me an award or like, I just did really what I wanted. And I always um, tried to respect myself and not like be something that was like, I thought would make me popular. Like I wasn't the most, like, I don't think at least like I'm the most like beautiful girl, the most like striking, but I do have like a passion. Like when I'm shooting my scenes, like I really try to like just get lost in it and like just have, the most organic sex possible. I, I wish there was more I could say, but I don't, I don't really put too much thought into it. I don't know. But I think that's the thing though. I think that's what the key to your success is, is your authenticity. The fact that you do love your show, that your, your job and that you do love performing and that, um, you don't put that much thought into it and you don't think, okay, this will get me an award and I'll, you know, and I'll wait to shoot this kind of scene until I can command this kind of rate. And I think that the fans really respond to performers that they can see love sex, you know, because yeah, there's tons absolutely. of really beautiful girls that are popular, um, like that there's so many gorgeous girls in our gorgeous and, and they do well, but you can just kind of tell like they're not that into it. Like, I don't know what it is. And I think the fans yeah. can really read I'm that. Fine, you know, like I think, you know, different strokes for different folks, because there may be people that love watching porn just to look at a beautiful girl getting fucked right. and not really yeah. focusing at how much she's enjoying it or enjoying it. I'm right. just thinking that my fans just like me for like me. I don't know. <laughs> like, Yeah. Yeah. And also too, I think w another thing about you that's, that's really wonderful and, and incredibly unique. And I definitely want to make sure that I preface this by saying that, you know, people should be able to do anything to their bodies that makes them feel beautiful, that makes them feel sexy. Like it's your body, it's your choice. But I do feel that, and I know because I've talked to performers who've said that they felt pressured to get a boob job. They felt pressured to get their lips done. You definitely that's like, you definitely don't need to get yours done. You were like born with these amazing lips that everyone's <laughs> trying to copy. And you know that, but like, you've also, I've seen you post on Instagram where you've been like, yeah, my nose is kind of big, but like, I love it. And like, yeah, my tits aren't the biggest, but I love it. Like you really embrace yourself as who you are. And I just think that sends a really wonderful message to people. Yeah. Thank you. And that's something that's really important to me because I do like plan on having um, kids one day and I don't want them to like grow up to think that, you know, my body doesn't look like a Coca-Cola, like my nose isn't super tiny, like my lips aren't huge, you know? And so that means I'm not pretty. I actually did an interview with Paper Magazine about that, where I was like, you know, don't think that you're not gorgeous because you don't look this way, because this is just one way to be beautiful. But there's, and everyone is like beautiful really in their own way. Like that sounds so cliche, but like when I was younger, like in high school, I remember like wanting to like get my nose done and wanting to get boobs and wanting, and then it took a long time for me to like be comfortable with myself and I don't want the future generation to have to like wait that long I want you to like always know that you don't have to look this this one way like right now it's like the Kardashian body like that's like the the standard of beauty but in like five years it could be something completely different just like in the early 2000s it was like being stick thin with like big boobs like it's always changing what's like popular but you like how you are naturally will like never go out of style. Cause that's like you, like, it's so unique. So like, yeah. And my nose, yeah, it's big, but like, it's like my nose, like no one has this nose. Like, why would I get it done and have like the nose that hundreds of girls have? Like, it gets uh, I really love, like yeah, I love that. And I love that you say that because I feel like so many people are starting to look like each other. Yeah. You know? And there's like, nothing wrong, you know, like whatever makes you happy, but just for the young girls that are like growing up right now, like I don't want them to think that you have to do those things to be beautiful. It's cool if you want to do it, but know that you're beautiful even if you don't do it. 
Like, yeah. Yeah. It's cool if you, if you really self conscious about it and you know what make you happy or cool, but you're beautiful without it. Like, you really don't need it. Yeah. Yeah. You're also really into fitness. Yeah. Um, and I think you said you've been posting that like tumbling is kind of like your new thing, yeah. which I know you haven't really been able to do because of quarantine. I'm not entirely familiar with what tumbling is. Okay. So it's like a so. new thing because I used to cheer when I was younger. So like mm-hmm. tumbling is like the gymnastics that you do in cheerleading. I round off by handsprings, back tucks, full layouts, Arabians. Like it's, so it's like, it's like gymnastics, but it's the, the one that's performed in cheerleading. So I don't know if you're familiar with like the bring it on movies, I guess, like where they show those kind of like stunts where they're like doing like flips across the floor. Um, so that's like what I do. And so I go back, to, I go to the same cheer gym that I went to when I was younger and it's actually fun because no one there knows I do porn it's very strange how they don't know, or maybe they do know and they don't tell me, but yeah. I feel like really normal when I'm there and I miss it a lot. I haven't been able to go since quarantine started. So it's yeah. really upsetting. There's something that's very community focused about fitness. Like yeah. I, I did boxing for five years and I really nice. developed a lot of strong friendships with the the people I did boxing with. And then I fucked my shoulder up and I couldn't keep going. But oh my God, yeah, that's, so, that's actually very common with boxing though. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Unfortunately, really it, like- the wear and tear is really bad. Yeah. So I, uh, started doing spin classes Um, because also running is bad for my hips and yeah, I miss, you know, I became friends with like the spin instructors and, you know, you see the same people all the time and there's something about like sweating together with other people and like kind of going through the pain of, of physical exertion and exercise that kind of brings you together. I don't know. Yeah. And also, I mean, when I can recall from like being in cheer and being in dance, it's like a sense of unity, like, especially when you're like going to competitions together and stuff, it's like you're a team and you're like, you like win together, you lose together. So that's something that I really miss a lot. I wish I was young enough to still compete. You can only compete until you're 18. But um, I'm always happy when like I see all the girls go off to competition and stuff. They actually had to cancel the whole cheer, com- like the competition season. They had to cancel it, which hasn't even happened since 9-11. So yeah. that's how you know that what we're dealing with this global pandemic is like real. Yeah. 2020 has been one fucking hell of a year. Yeah. I can't wait to tell my kids about it. Like they're not even going to believe me. They're really not going to be like. (laughs) Well, you know, it's funny. I I keep thinking about the fact that like one day my kid's going to have to do like a report, like a history report on 2020 and they're going to want to interview me on like what that year was like. Oh my God. Do you remember the Australian wildfires? How that was like the biggest devastation and that was horrible? Recently, right? Yeah. That happened at the beginning of this yeah. year. Yeah. And it's like, and, and I remember when it was happening at the time, it was so terrible. And it, I mean, it's, it's not it any less terrible, terrible, but it just got like the fact that 2020 started off with that. And now we're where we are at now with everything that's happened. It's just like, what the fuck? Yeah. Every month got significantly worse. <laughs> yeah, it did. It really did. A new month to begin, but all we can do is stay positive, you know. Um, yeah. Hopefully, they find a vaccine or a cure for COVID, and um, hopefully, um, people of color get the justice that they deserve. And hopefully, we can find peace and we can end the year on a good note. And if not, then we'll get there eventually. Twenty twenty one. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to 2021. No kidding. Okay. uh, We're going to take a quick commercial break, guys. And when we come back, we're going to talk about Abella's new directing gig for MoFos. I always love to talk about performers um, moving to the other side of the camera because I just think it's such an interesting dynamic and a, a really cool move forward for women in our industry. So hang on. We'll be right back. Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by our friends at Manscaped. Do you or your partner desire a pair of smooth hairless balls, but you don't want to bring a razor down there because you don't want to damage your crown jewels in any way? This is where Manscaped comes to the rescue. Their electric trimmer, the Lawnmower 3.0, has proprietary skin safe technology that will not nick or snag your nuts, guaranteed. 
And plus they have so many other products to offer. They have stuff like their crop reviver and their crop preserver, which helps your balls not only smell amazing, but also prevents them from chafing, sticking, or sweating. So if you or somebody in your life wants to up your genital game and you don't want to use the same trimmer that you use on your face down there, make sure that you go to manscaped.com, use code Holly and get 20% off plus free shipping. That's manscaped.com. Use code Holly for 20% off plus free shipping. All right, we're back. So, Abella, you have recently moved over to the other side of the camera. You started directing. Can you tell us what prompted that happening? Okay, so um, I found myself um, really wanting to be a director because my favorite directors are women. So it was just kind of like, why are there not more female directors? Like there's so many there are, especially compared to when I first got into porn. So I can only imagine even before, cause I've only been in porn for six years, but I've seen more and more female directors and it's just so different to have sex in front of a female director than it is to a woman. And then it is to shooting in front of a man. And it's just kind of like, Sometimes I would be on set and I would be like, whoa, like I'm the only girl here. Like it would be the male director, the male PM, the male. And then it's just like, I don't know. It's so comforting to have like a girl there to, I would say protect you. Not that like you can't, you're not protected when you're, but it's like, okay. So like the best way I could describe it is when you're shooting for a guy director and the guy's having wood problems the guy director most of the time will like sympathize with the guy because they know how it is like when you know not to get wood but then like so one of my favorite female directors like she'll be like what's wrong with you like why can't you get hard for her like she like feels bad for me because like which is like honestly guy people don't think about it but when a guy can't stay hard for a girl like that really kind of like blows their self-esteem for a little bit because you're just like what am I doing wrong that you can't I don't know. So it was like a mixture of things. Like I wanted to like, and I love shooting girls for scenes because um, it just, I like to make them feel like really comfortable and like know that they have like an ally there. Like I understand what it's like, like I've been in your shoes. So, um, and I just wanted to like capture people having like really amazing sex. Like I never really like tell people like what to do. Obviously if, like I can't see anything. I'm like, you know, open up a little bit, but like, yeah, I kind of just like let girls like have fun and I love dressing them and making them look super cute and just so many things. I love, love, love directing. I love performing a little bit more though, because it's a lot more stress-free. I will say that. Mm, yeah. Because what a lot of people may not realize is that in the adult industry with directing comes producing. Oh. You don't get to just direct. You yeah. have 10 other hats. Yeah. It's like, uh, like last minute cancellations and like people not testing and like so many things that can go wrong. Like even the night before the day of, and I'm just like, ah, like, I wish I could, like, it's so much easier when you just show up and like, just have sex. Um, yeah. it is definitely more rewarding. Like, directing in a sense because you're just like you get to like watch this thing that you made and um you like got to like make the performers happy and then make the millions of people that are watching it happen so it's like this really cool like chain reaction that i mm. got to be a part of what um was there anything about direct was there anything that you learned from directing that maybe made you realize why made you like kind of be like, give you an aha moment with performing. Do you know what I mean? Like when you perform sometimes and directors want something specific and then you're like, yes. Oh, so why do I have to do this or whatever? And then yes, you're, director, you're like, Oh, yes, yes. So now I understand when um, directors call cut or a performer calls cut, they want you to stay as still as possible and not like go across the room and yeah. get on your phone or something like that. Cause um, yeah. it makes for like a harder, like cut point to like start back from like, um, so I was like, oh, I get it now. Like, I've been making these people miserable by like doing, I don't even know what. So I'm kind of more, I think it's actually made me a better performer, like to be a director as well. Cause you're more like aware of like the camera and like how it works. And, um, yeah. So for sure. I, I will say that's a hundred percent true. I love shooting performers who also direct because they, intuitively know what I need. 
Yeah. They know, like we were speaking earlier, you know, we were literally, we started this podcast and my fucking dogs barked while you were in the middle of answering a question. And I was like, okay, we need to cut this out. And you knew to go back to me asking you the question so that you could start up by answering the question so that we had like, you know, we didn't have to try to splice words together. And I was like, this girl understands directing. I've been lucky to learn a lot since I've started directing and I got to like, um, be like mentored by a mind geek director. And I got to like learn a lot from him. And I'm like really grateful that I got into like learn so much and do something that I, cause it's, it's really hard to direct, like learning how to use a camera took me like a long time and like mm-hmm. understanding like all this, like I have so much more respect for directors now than I did when I was a performer. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's not just, I never thought it was that, but like one day I was on set and I was already directing and it was like a few months ago and the sound guy was like, you're just pushing a button. And I was like, okay, no, I wish it was just shooting a button. Like, no, it is not. Like I, I could, I was like baffled that he would even say that because so much like goes into it. Like I had to learn how to set up my lights and like put on diffusers and like, like, you know, test shadows and the white balance and, color correction, like so much that I was like, I can't believe you even just said that. So it really made me um, appreciate like the work that directors do and like how much hard they work to like shoot good content. Yeah. When people, and I don't know if you've had this question, but I get this all the time, you know, does like, how do you not get so turned on when you're directing a scene? <laughs> and, and, like, look- don't you want to jump in there? And I was like, the sex is the last thing I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about camera angles. I'm thinking about shadows. I'm thinking about time because, you know, we're paying by the hour or we need to be out of a location by a certain time. I'm thinking about, um, like everything, how much time, like (laughs) more time we need, like everything else. Like I am looking at it, but I'm not. And I do find like, if I'm shooting something that's like really good, I'm like, like I find myself getting like a smile on my face yeah, but it's um, different, but, right? It's no, not like a, I want to touch myself. No, style. no, no. Yeah, it's more of like you you don't even you're not even thinking about it because you just don't want to like mess up your camera work. Like you don't I yeah, you're like yeah, I'm like that's I never really got asked that, but no, I've never wanted to touch myself while shooting a scene. <laughs> no, it's so stressful. If anything, sometimes I'm like shooting a script and like they see something really funny and I'm like like I like try not to like I'm like I can't laugh. So, yeah. Okay. That's like the one thing that's almost happened to me that I almost laughed, but thankfully I, I didn't. I can put I've, I've 100% had to cut scenes because I had to just laugh because yeah. <laughs> the performers were, one of them was, I was shooting a Leah Love and Tyler Nixon together okay. and they just, fu- they were like ad libbing and the way they were going on, I, I couldn't. I was just like, okay cut and I just like fell over on the floor. I'm like, oh I God. can't hold it in anymore. You guys are killing me. Yeah. It's so, yeah. So that's the one thing, but no, I, um, maybe if I was like a PA on set, maybe I would like, you know, if I'm not actually handling any, like if I'm not doing sound or if I'm, but yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so, oh, Another thing uh, that you and I have kind of talked about in the past, which is unique about you, is that you actually love working with new performers, whereas most people hate working with new performers because they generally have no experience and it's a lot more work yeah. on your part to help them carry the scene. So why why do you love working with new performers so much? Um, so first, because one day I, like once upon a time, I was a new performer and all these this amazing talent that already existed worked with me. So it's like, who am I to deny these men and women like the chance, especially because so many of the, like, for example, like when I first worked, I was with one of the first girls to work with Marcus Dupree. Like no one knew who he was. Like a lot of people wouldn't hire him because he was with LA Direct. And I was like, no, I'm going to work with this guy. He ended up being so amazing. I was like, speak with this guy's awesome. Look at him now. He's like, the, like one of the best performers, you know, and like, and small hands was new once upon a time. Like I worked with him when he was brand new. He used to only work for Joanna. Like, I don't know. I see a lot of new talent. That's now like the top performers. So mm-hmm. it's fun to be like able to see that you got to try them like in the beginning before they were like super popular. Yeah. 
Do you ever get, I would imagine that some new guys must be intimidated by you, you know, you being such a big name. So how do you handle that when that happens? And does that happen frequently? Um, I guess it would happen more when I shoot in Miami. I work with um, guys that don't really work with a lot of um, well-known girls. They kind of work with like new girls mostly out here. And I just try to be as nice to them as possible. Like I'm just like super nice, like super like, you know, attentive. And I'm just like, you know, what do you like? Like whatever. Cause I don't want people to be intimidated by me. Like I'm really like normal and chill. So I'm just like, you know, don't think about it. Like, it's just like, I'm literally a normal person. So it has happened before though, but, um, it usually ends up being fine. Like I never really have anyone be so nervous that they can't perform. Like they always like do a good job. The So you don't have guys fail on you too often? No, actually when it's like, a guy that has like failed on me, it's like, they're just like having like a bad day. And like, and yeah. it's someone that I've worked with many times before that, and they we've shot amazing scenes together. You know, everyone has bad days. So totally. the new guys, all the new guys that I've worked with have been like pretty solid. Like they've never really, you know, they like held their own <laughs> and I'm sure. And they get, just get better over time. Like every performer, yeah. you know, like, you just get better and better and more. And not that you get better, you just get more comfortable with yourself in front of the camera to kind of just right. let yourself go more. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that also comes down to kind of what we were talking about before, you know, your, your authenticity and your down to earthness, because I can see how a guy would be intimidated by like, Oh my God, I'm going to work with a ball of danger. And then they meet you and you're like just this normal chill girl and you don't have any pretension about you. And, and, you probably, I would imagine that you just have a really unique way of setting people at ease and making them feel comfortable and making them feel like you want to do the scene with them, you know, because yeah. I've seen so many girls who are just kind of like, oh, a new guy, like you're so fortunate to be working with me. No, and I'm yeah, going to do sucks. nothing to help you yeah, get hard. Yeah. You're just making the day harder for yourself because, you know, like you were new one day too. And like, I find that a lot with like, um, like with wi the women that I work with that are new too, I try to make them feel so comfortable too, because, you know, you, you don't want you don't want to be like, oh no, you're doing it wrong in like a condescending way. You just kind of like over time find a way to like, like me, and me for me as like at least like I just kind of try to find a way to like guide girls without like making it seem like they don't know what they're doing or being condescending mm -hmm. about it. Like I just kind of be like, you know, come over here. Like <laughs> I really do feel like shooting porn as a successful director and as a performer and obviously now you're embodying both, requires some serious people skills. Oh, yeah. Especially being a director, like, you really have to have a lot of patience. Like, you can't just, like, blow up on a girl that's being, like, a total diva or, like, mm -hmm. you, you don't want to get that reputation that you're, like, this meat. Like, you really have to have a lot of patience as a director. Like, I give directors props because I'm not going to say names, but I've had a few girls and I'm just like... Yeah, I know. You just try to get through the day and try to make it, you know, you try to still have an amazing scene, even though you don't have the nicest person on set. <laughs> right, right. How do you deal with that, those kind of scenarios? Like if you have some, a girl who's being difficult. I try to kill them with kindness. I'm just like, kill them with kindness. And then when they're done, just pray that I don't have to shoot them again. Or if I do have to shoot them again, that they're nicer next time. <laughs> <laughs> more professional next time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right because it doesn't help to get angry with them because yeah. what I what I have found what I truly try to remind myself is that usually when girls are being difficult it comes from a place of fear. Yeah. Right? Because they're unsure of themselves, they feel insecure. The reason that they're questioning every outfit that you put on them is because they don't feel sexy. Yeah, yeah. Like it's they're like just not yeah, it's like they didn't they didn't come to set thinking like how am I going to make Holly's day horrible? Yeah, you know, they, yeah. they come to set with this burden of insecurity. So I I always try to stop and remind myself of that and then generally by the end of the day their you attitude know, is much better. Yeah, for sure. And I remember and I also like remember what it's like to be new and not be like the most confident and that's why I try to mm -hmm. like you know, I won't make a girl wear something that she doesn't feel comfortable in like I'm just like, you know, whatever you want like I have options like here you go like I'm really you know we're not trying to like 
make you have a bad day on set. Like that's not like sometimes this script calls for like a certain look or, you know, something or like if a girl loves really glam makeup, like for me, like I love natural makeup, but like if the scene calls for like glam makeup or like, if mostly it's vice versa that I see girls that I'm like, you know, your makeup has to be like this. You're playing like a girl's ne- girl next door and they're like, no, but I want really big lashes and really heavy eyeshadow. And I understand where they're coming from because some girls feel more comfortable Mm. looking like that you know yeah but I try to kind of like you know meet in the middle because I understand like I want you to feel pretty at the same time but you know you kind of have to find this middle ground where um, it'll- I, I feel you so hard on that there usually the first battle or the biggest battle is the makeup yeah for sure. makeup. <laughs> yeah a hundred percent and um a lot of times there'll be especially when twisties was doing this new um, turning twisties where it was like this lesbian girl, like kind of more butch lesbian turning like a girly girl gay. Uh, They wanted really natural, not like butch in a way, just like natural makeup. So like, but you know, just like I did my shop for those and it was like, it was like, you know, wear like a leather jacket and like very natural makeup and yeah. Yeah. And then you'd have girls come in with these huge lashes, like the lash extensions, and there's nothing you can do about it. And you're just like, okay, well, we're just gonna, you know, yeah, add, I, really add, I can't it. rip them off your yeah, eye. So sheet. what are we gonna do? Yeah, I really made a point to put on my call sheet like no lash extensions. <laughs> oh, girl, I've done that too. And and then those, I'm sure off. you know they don't fucking read it, I'm like, or they don't care. They just yeah, show up like. like okay, it's fine. And it's just like, but as long as I'm like, some of them, I'm just like, whoa, like you look like, it's like. It's a lot. It's a lot. lot. Yeah. We definitely have challenges that I don't think fans really like know about. No. Another one of those is nails for me. Yeah. Like if the girl's supposed to be. A lot of girl girl. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, for sure. Like the long, sharp nails. And then it's like, okay, well, I guess we're not doing any fingering in this scene. Which is sucks because that's like, there's only so many things you could do in Girl Girl. Like I shoot Mm -hmm. a Mofo's lesbian site and it's not really a site that they like a lot of toys in. It's mostly like Mm -hmm. just two girls having sex. So it's definitely like, there's only so much you could do when you eliminate not being able to finger the girl. Yeah. But not only that, you know, sometimes it'll, it'll be a very specific like wardrobe look, especially for treat of the month. And they'll come with like neon bright nails and they're supposed to do like romantic, like bed yeah. set. And then it's just like, that's not going to work. Yeah. It's but difficult. Do? Or no BTS yeah. on set plus all the BTS on set. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I like I have so that. I'm like, do not post, do not shoot for OnlyFans or Fan Central. And it's like, I'll find them in the bathroom. Oh, <laughs> totally. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, oh my god girl uh yeah so you totally understand like i love ever catch this is what i for anything on set because i know like you're not supposed to do that like they literally send an email to all of us make sure talent does not chew anything on set yeah (laughs) because you will lose girls in the bathroom like wait you're paying per hour for the location yeah you're waiting for her to come to set and she's shooting an OnlyFans set in the fucking bathroom. Yeah, and you're like, great. fuck girl, like go, you know what? Like, how about this? After the scene, the makeup artist will touch up your makeup a little bit. You go home and shoot that shit. Yeah. That is so like, nice of you, but you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I'm just like, can you please not? <laughs> <sighs> yeah. It's so, yeah. Or like, just don't, like the twisties treat of the month stuff, they always don't want BTS shot on set because it's like yeah, a they surprise want to until it comes out. Yes, yes, yes. And you can shoot BTS on set, but they ask that you save it and then wait until yeah, your really. you come out, and then you can post whatever you want. And then yeah, there was one girl that I I shot. remember you told me. You told me. She was she was the one who was also two hours late to set. Oh yes, you told me very you know didn't we talked give a fuck. Yeah. And she just like and I was like, no BTS on set. And she was like, okay. She's like live streaming the whole thing. Oh I was just like, I called Rachel. I'm like, I don't know what to do. And she's like, I don't know. She's like, you know what? You- I love Rachel. She's awesome. Yeah. I'm like, she's like, I get it. Like sometimes it's just, you're just like, you know what? Whatever. Yeah. I can't stop you. Like, Yeah. But that same girl, she was getting a flashlight and 
um, they told me the same thing. They were like, please keep it a secret. Like, don't reveal it. And she posted a bunch of BTS on set, like the flashlight office. And we're like, they were like, okay, like disregard. We does not give up. Fuck. Yeah. Like, she even when she showed up two hours late to my set, and I know like I'm gonna get so many comments like, who is it? I'm not gonna fucking yeah, tell we're you. We're not gonna tell guys. We're not gonna say very who it is. A very nice girl. She just does not like listening to instructions. No. No. And she showed up to our late set and she literally, and, and part of me sort of respected her for being honest about this. Um, but the other part of me was obviously very angry because she really <laughs> fucked our day because like we had to be done by five. It was a yeah. very specific location with a weird landlord. Um, and she was like, yeah, I was just like up doing a lot of blow last night. And, like I just, <laughs> <laughs> I do respect the honesty, but also like, fuck you. <laughs> Cause I'm, yeah, that's the thing. I, I was like, on one hand, I'm like, well, at least she's not lying about I'm having food poison. Her tell you that or like make something like, how do you think you would have felt if you would have been, if she would have been like, oh, I just missed my alarm or I'm sorry, like my phone was dead and I you, like, and you actually did believe that. Which one do you think you would have like gone with? Like that you would have been. It, if, well, I wouldn't have believed her first of all. <laughs> I wouldn't have believed her because I hear that so often. And you can tell like there's definitely some people that just have a bad morning. Like that happens to everyone. Yeah. Um, But you can tell if somebody's sorry about being late when they show up or if they just don't care. And she did not care. Yeah. And that's what makes me that to me is the most infuriating is when you don't respect the time of others. Yeah. No, just an onset to work with this person and they've been so late and made the late day go by. So, I mean, so many girls and one even had the audacity to be like, wow, we finished so fast. And I was like, imagine how much faster we would have finished. Had you not shown up two hours late? Just imagine, just imagine. <laughs> that's, a, that's what I love about Spiegler though. It's like, you cannot be late with him. Like whenever I, I'm shooting a Spiegler girl, I know she's going to be on time, super professional. She's going to give me an awesome scene. And I'm like happy when I get to book one of his girls. Yeah. Everybody feels this. Everybody in the industry feels the yeah. same way. If I get a last minute cancellation, I'm always like, okay, call a Spiegler first. Cause first of all, he's going to answer the phone. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's going to tell me immediately who's available and I'm not going to have to wait an hour for him to try to get a hold of her to see if she like is actually going to the beach that day or something like that. Like I know that it's tricky being a speaker girl because you're always on call even when your days are off. But as a producer, it's so wonderful because you can absolutely rely on his talent like 100%. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I, I don't know how many like, prior to my contract, how many times I would like wake up to like a call from him at like 8am and be like, you want to work today? And I'm like, sure. And it's like, but Spiegel Girls also like coming in and saving the day. Like we really, yeah. we like it because it just makes us look good and like whoever yeah. canceled look bad. So we yeah. like coming in and being like the hero whenever someone cancels. Yeah. Can I ask you what like the dumbest excuse you ever got for a girl canceling was? Can you think of any? Um, okay. So... There was a girl who said that she, um, okay, get ready for this. She was like, she was like, I have razor burn. I can't chew. And I was like, okay, can we like see a picture of it? And then she was like, yeah, sure. She sends us a picture. There's like nothing there. And, um, I was like, oh, no worries. Like there's really nothing there. Like we can airbrush it. Like it's fine. And then she was like, no, but I just don't feel like shooting tomorrow. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you couldn't just like say that. Like, like that was the most ridiculous one for me. Yeah. Or like send or like come up with something else that can't be proved. Like your know. grandma died or. But it's like, if like you didn't that. just feel like shooting. You could have just said that. And I would have just been like, okay, like, fine. I'm not booking you again. But like, why lie? And then me be like, it's okay, come. Cause it really wasn't anything on her vagina. And then, and then ending up saying the truth anyways, that no, I just don't feel like shooting tomorrow. Yeah. Like, or find a picture from WebMD with or something. It's oh in that. Oh, I'm sure that that's like Spiegler said that a girl got a flat tire and he was like, send me a picture. And then he like Googles flat tire and it's like the first picture to come out. So 
He told me that one too. And also too, I think you can look at metadata of pictures. Yeah, yeah. You and find can. out like when they were taken. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Yeah. I have I have a friend one time that told me that um he like got a picture from a girl and he was like, Oh, she was like, Oh, sorry, like I can't right now. I'm like homesick. And then he, she he saves it to the camera roll and then it shows that the location is in Las Vegas. <laughs> so she's really just in Vegas and not like homesick. So Oh, yeah, exactly. It's like, it's, it's not as easy to lie anymore as it yeah. used to be. But that's good. That's good. It is good. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you, Avala. This has been really awesome. This has been really fun. No, thank um, you for being patient with me and like waiting around until we can like both do it. You're a Bella danger. I will wait until the end of time. You're Holly Randall. You're like <laughs> one of the best directors ever. And your mom is one of the best directors too. I love her work. I love her pictures and stuff. And like, I, I've told you that before, but she's awesome. I read Lisa Ann's book one day, like cover to cover. And she had a lot of Sue's Randall pictures in there. And yeah. she's amazing. So yeah. Yeah. My mom, uh, yeah, my mom and Lisa Ann go way back. She's, uh, it's actually, uh, it was funny. Um, somebody posted a picture today. I guess it's like Sylvia Saint's birthday and they showed he posted a video of Sylvia Saint and like Shawn Michaels and Shawn Michaels like retweeted it. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. I remember that video, but it's, it's, it's cool. You know, when I talk to performers who've mm-hmm. like worked with her from, from way back and people always have interesting stories about her. Yeah. Lisa Ann said that she would like shoot with her like interracial when it wasn't so like glamorized and, and popular. And mm-hmm. she, it was just something that she made so like beautiful without like, um, making it something that was like stereotypical or mm-hmm. like that. So I think it's like really cool. I've, I've seen a lot of her work. So yeah, the moment is over. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so before we go, actually, since you just started directing, you're directing from mofos. Mm-hmm. Do you have a favorite scene that people should go check out? Okay. It's not out yet. So I'll keep you posted, but okay. it's not out yet. But I definitely do have a favorite that I just shot right before um, quarantine started. So I'll keep you posted. And who, do you know who, can you say who it was with? <sighs> or are you going to like post it online? I'm going to keep it a secret because it, okay. um, it's a girl's like first scene ever. So, oh, okay. Then yeah, yeah we I'm definitely need to keep that a secret. I don't want anyone to snag her and like shoot her before the scene comes out. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, totally. Because I mean, like, someone will be like, "Oh, you shot their first scene," and then they'll like get her and then like shoot this, shoot a scene with her. And well, I guess they can't do that right now because we're in quarantine. But whatever, it's gonna be a secret. It's gonna be a secret. Yeah, but they could still like snag her and then publish the scene before. Yeah, exactly. Mofos yeah. does. I mean, you never know, like, yeah. when people are gonna post it's scenes gonna like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, where can people? I mean, I feel like. Everybody knows where they can find you online, but just in case, okay. where can people find you online? Okay, so I'm on Twitter at Abella underscore danger, and I'm on Instagram at danger she wrote. Which, by the way, is a great fucking handle. Thank you. Uh, Thank I love you. that handle. It's really cool. Yeah, sadly, Abella danger was taken, but then I ended up liking danger she wrote more anyways. Like, it's cooler. Yeah. I'm glad I, yeah. I got it's it. It's really cool. And you guys can follow me at Holly Randall on Twitter and on Instagram. Go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered to see, to support this podcast and see more bonus content. Abella and I are actually going to do a quick um, Q and a from questions that my Patreon members asked, which will be exclusive to my Patreon. So for bonus content like that, you should definitely go to my Patreon and support my show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we will see you next week. Bye.